His presence among us should have more meaning today than it ever has before. And each and every time that he comes before us, these are moments that we must cherish. And every word that God is putting on his heart and his mind for us, as God revived him and breathed new life into him, here is our minister and our brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let us receive him, Mas Marian. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his coming and for his raising up in our midst one to lead, teach, and guide us to the straight path of God, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I'm always thankful to Allah every time He blesses me to be able to come before you to share with you some of that which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad shared with us of the wisdom of Allah. For the last uh, few weeks, we have been dealing with the coming of the Mahdi, the Messiah, and the presence of Allah, God, in the world. All of the religious bodies that spring from the revealed word of Allah, the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran, Muslims, Christians, and Jews are all expecting the coming of God at the end of the time of the rule of the enemy of God and the enemy of humanity the devil or Satan. This language of the coming of God is strange for Muslims because Muslims believe that Allah is always present. But in truth, the Holy Quran teaches us that Allah would give Satan a season to rule and to deceive as many as he would. And God would not interfere until the end of the season given to Satan. That season or time we are taught and the scholars of religion bear witness was to be 6,000 years. We have arrived to the end of that time. So we should be scanning the horizon for the coming of this mighty one who would come and make manifest this satanic being and destroy his works. In order to understand such a marvelous uh, event, the coming of God, we have to consult 
the scriptures of both Bible and Quran to see what these great books have to say about this mighty event. The Quran, as we said last week, refers to the days of Allah. And we know that this is not speaking of a 24 hour period, but it is a time when his presence would produce clashing between truth and falsehood and between the forces of good and the forces of evil on the earth. It is called in the Quran and in the Bible, the day of judgment. Well, what do you mean, day of judgment? In Eastern religions, they don't have any such thing as the preaching of an end of the world. None of the East, Far Eastern religions they don't talk like that. But when you get to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, you read of the end of a world, and it would be by fire. Is that right? Now, since it's not talking about the East, now, Allah says in the Quran, he sent prophets to every nation. Every nation, he says, has received its warner. Yet the people of the East who have received guidance and warning from Allah never talk about the end of the world. But when you come to the West, and the light of the prophets that started in the east and shone westward, you get this talk, the end of a world. Well, whose world is going to end? It's the western world. It's the world of the white man. It is the power of the white people that they have exercised over the human family. That power is to be broken and their world is to be destroyed by the coming, the presence, and the power of God. So the prophets set up a huge problem that would prove the presence of God since the devil's job is to deceive the people with regards to the reality of God. Then God has to create a condition that would allow the people to know his presence. Well, how, how would he do this? What would he do? He would create an enemy that nobody could destroy but himself. And that enemy would create a condition in his people that nobody could solve but himself. So here you have in the Western world or the white world, the Caucasian people coming out of Europe a little over 400 years ago and having the freedom to go to every part of the earth and everywhere they went, they found original inhabitants there. And they went in among those original inhabitants and slaughtered them and established among them a religion 
that they call Christianity. You didn't know anything about Christianity. It was a religion that had its start more in Europe, although there were Christians in Africa, there were Jews in Africa, but it was a different kind of, it was a different kind of religion among the Semitic people or the Asiatic people. But when Europe got a hold to it, as the Europeans corrupted us, they corrupted the word of Almighty God. I'm going to go in weeks to come, inshallah, into the origin of these religions so that you will not feel bad when we say to you, Jesus didn't know anything about what you call Christianity. Now, this may come as a shock to you, and it, I hope I'm not hurting your feelings in any way because I have love for you and respect for you. But the greatest respect I have is for the truth. And I know it is only the truth that will set you free. Nowhere in the Gospels where they have the words of Jesus do you find the name Christian. It's not here. Nowhere in the writings or the sayings of Jesus does he say to the people, I am a Christian. He never said no such thing. Well, what is this that has been given to us and to the peoples of the world in his name? The Bible tells us that the followers of Jesus at Antioch were called Christians, and the name stuck. Some of you may be a little angry with me for what I said last week concerning the cross, please. You need to become a student now of what you have believed and never challenged. You need to become a